Hey, good morning. I'm Sid Masterson, and I show men how to become unstuck, unshakable, and unstoppable. In today's video, I want to talk to you, actually, I want to talk to one man in particular who reached out to me and, and is struggling to let go. He's struggling to let go of a woman who doesn't want to be in his life anymore. And this is such a common scenario for me to encounter that I thought I'd respond in a more generic video that I could share with you because this comes up all the time and it can be a really challenging landscape to navigate. How do you let go of the woman who's let go of you or who is letting go of you? And you know, I get a lot of times as a response, well, can you give me some tips? How do I do it? How do I actually let go? And um, I spent some time thinking about this because I think a lot of advice out there is altogether unhelpful. You can't just tell somebody who's struggling to let go to try harder, to let go. We grip on people for a reason. So it brought to mind a story from when I was an early father, um, like 20 some odd years ago, and we took our firstborn to swimming lessons at the YMCA. He was a little guy and they required that one parent or the other get in the pool and be kind of like, you know, their swimming buddy. And my son was so terrified that he latched onto my neck with a grip that was quite surprising for a little guy. And it was extremely uncomfortable to have him gripping my neck like this, but he was terrified of being in the water and what was being asked from him. And no matter what I did to try to get him to release the grip from my neck, I tried to, I tried to like grab his hand and get him to grab on the side of the pool, he would just go whoosh, right back to my neck. And of course this made learning to swim quite challenging because he wouldn't let go of my neck. And you know what his issue there was, was fear combined with a lack of confidence that he could swim, which is why we were in the pool. And I think this is a great metaphor for what men experience. Men grip on somebody like a partner because they're afraid and they lack confidence. Now, I can't just tell a man in that situation, just let go, just let go. I mean, they do need to let go, but how do you let go? You don't let go by trying to let go. You learn to let go by having a confidence in reaching for something else. Now that something else is not the edge of the pool. It's yourself. You see, I grab onto things, specifically things in other people or outside of me, to the degree that I'm not confident inside of me. And I'm not talking about a confidence that comes with how much money do I make or how good am I at at sports or a task or my job. Those kinds of confidence are what we call behavioral confidence and they're very feeble because if we get into a season where we're not making a lot of money or we're injured and so we're not physically fit or what have you, then our sense of self erodes with that. And yet this is the system that a lot of men have built their sense of self and their confidence upon. A lot of men built their confidence in how does my partner feel about me? And the moment a partner stops feeling good about them, they stop feeling good about themselves. And that's what causes men to grip fiercely around the neck of a partner. And just like it made me want to get out of the pool and call it quits on swimming lessons, when a man grabs on a woman's neck like that, it gives her the same impulse. I got to get out of here. This is not the situation I want to be in. I want to be in a loving mutual exchange relationship where we support one another, not where we are one another's safety blanket or where we are one another's life source. That's not support, that's dependency. And dependency kills relationships. It puts the other person in an impossible situation of having to be responsible for their partner. And this is what makes them the relationship implode or explode, however you want to see it. And that's what happened to this man. That's what happened to most men I meet in this situation. Their dependency has caused them to cling to and grip their partner with this sense of anxiety. Some people might call this anxious attachment. And I'm not saying this to shame or judge any man in such situation. He didn't really have much to do with how he got in this situation. His own circumstances, our own circumstances, in childhood and leading up through that, they bring us to a place where we're afraid, where we feel terrified to take care of ourselves, where we have so judged and rejected ourselves 
that we don't believe that we can be the source for what we need. And so what do we do? We cling to things. We cling to people. We cling to partners and lovers. And when they move away from us, we think that our pain is coming from a tremendously deep love for them. But it's not. I'm not saying we don't love them, but our pain is coming from losing the object of our dependency and the pain of feeling fear and like we won't be okay. And here's the hard truth. If you're not okay when a woman leaves you, you're not okay when she's with you because you don't know how to be okay. She's the source of being okay. And that does not lead to a good relationship. I don't think most women want to be the thing that makes the man in their life okay or not okay. It might appeal to their ego, but at the end of the day, it doesn't make for a good relationship. It makes for a smothering, high pressure relationship and an unsafe relationship where a woman, most women can't wait to get away. And so if you're struggling like that, I'm not gonna tell you just let go because you're not gonna be able to do that. And you're not gonna be able to let go quickly not until you actually have confidence in grabbing onto something else. And that th something else that you need to grab onto, that is your sense of self. That is a grabbing onto and the belief that you have value, worth, and significance without anyone else giving it to you. That is to self-source your sense of well-being. And it's really the only sustainable, long-term way to have rock-solid, unshakable, and unstoppable confidence because the moment I put those things outside of me, well, they're not in my control. They're up to the fickleness and the feebleness of the sources that I have placed them in. And so brother, here's what I want you to do. I want you to stop trying to let go. And I want you to start trying instead to turn inward, to ask yourself, what is it that I believe about me that I'm not enough? And let's get clear about that because it's those beliefs and stories that we have told ourselves about things of being inadequacy, things where we are ashamed, things where we feel like we're not enough, places where we feel like we don't measure up or that others are better than us. It's those beliefs that are limiting us, that cause us when we look inward to say, nope, can't find what I need here, and we return our gaze outside. And so when you learn to keep coming back inward, grabbing on to self, holding on to self, you realize a few things. First of all, self will never let you down to the degree that you believe that self is trustable. And so when you learn to trust yourself, and we do that through a number of things, one, by clearing up our shame and the belief that there's something wrong with us, and two, by repeatedly showing up for ourselves day after day. When I do that, I build self-confidence. That is the belief that I can show up for myself. And when I do that day after day after day after day, and I look in the rear view mirror of life, I look back and say, yeah, I'm showing up for myself consistently. I'm consistently okay. I'm consistently meeting my own internal need of being okay. When I do that, then I can look forward into the future and trust, why wouldn't I keep doing that? And it makes navigating the idea of the future so much more easy because I trust that a future me will be there for me. And if I don't know how to do that, I will shift that focus to a rescuer. I'll look for a hero in my story, someone who will come and save the day. And that person is never going to come because you are the hero in your own story. And when you stop being willing to be the hero in your own story, and you look for heroes to come into your story, you're out of sync with the human experience. We're not here to have a story where somebody else is our hero. Our story is a hero's journey, which is you and me and everybody realizing that we are okay, we have what it takes, that we're enough. And the way we experience that, unfortunately, is through a plot line that could be pretty painful that puts us in a scenario where we're uncertain, we're unsure, we feel afraid, we feel fear, we look into the future with, with trepidation and anxiety, and we keep going, we go into it. And you know what you find when you step into that future when you feel like that? That you're okay, 
that you're okay in the scary place, that you're okay when a woman moves away from you, that you're okay when you lose a job, that you're okay when you get a bad news, you're okay when you get into debt, you're okay when your car breaks down, you're okay when you get sick, you're always okay. It's the fear that I won't be okay later that is what haunts us. And that's what makes us cling to other things as rescuers and heroes to save us from that feeling. But it's an illusion. It's always been an illusion. You're okay right now. If you turn inward and practice that today, do it again tomorrow, do it again the next day, do it again the next day, you're going to find that you're already enough, that you're okay. And when you become convinced of that, you will naturally let go of the people that you're struggling to let go of. Again, I'm Sven Masterson. If this has been helpful to you and you're feeling like this gentleman I'm speaking with, you want to reach out and talk, you can look in the comments or in the description below. I'd be happy to have a complimentary session with you and talk more. I'll see you later. Take care.